I'm author Mark Muncy. And I'm author Erica Lance. And this is Eerie Travels. You might listen to this podcast and hear us say Eerie Adventure, but due to a 1937 copyright issue, our podcast is actually named Eerie Travels. So just insert that whenever you hear Eerie Adventure because, oops, that never happened. Oh my goodness. We're here. We're this here. Is, we did this it. Is crazy. I mean, I've, I, for a generation, it seems, <laughs> uh, uh, you know, we have been. I have been told that I need to do this on my own, that I need, I, I, I'm the professional podcast guest of note on many a podcast and a guest host on several. So now they're all like, well, why don't you just host your own? Well, I'm putting my money where my mouth is here and, uh, and we're doing it. We're doing oh, it. No. It's, it's about, it's about effing time, Mark, there. I said that for everybody <laughs> who's listening, who's thinking the same thing, that it's about All right. time. All right. Well, let's, let's hope it holds up and let's hope, uh, you know, we, we, we deliver on the promise that this is. So without further ado, welcome to the inaugural episode of Eerie Adventures. Uh, yeah, yeah. So I am your host, your ghost host, as it were. Uh, I'm Mark Muncy. I am the author of the Erie, Florida book series and now Erie Appalachia and future volumes in the works. And then my co host is the amazing. Oh, Erica Lance. I wasn't <laughs> sure if you're going to say my name. I, I thought was going to let you do it. Like, you know, throw, throw petals, but I am Erica Lance. I am a horror author and my stories don't have happy endings, but I am also the host of the Drinking with Authors podcast, which you're a co-host on and an absolute fan, number one fan. I'm not, that's not that creepy of Mark for years and years and years. So ooh, I'm so excited to be here. Yeah, I am. I am thrilled beyond words that we're actually doing this. So, um, now, uh, you know, everybody knows me as the eerie Florida guy. In fact, that's what I get addressed in my emails quite a bit. Hey, creepy Florida guy, would you, you know, I, I saw this weird thing. I heard this weird thing. And, uh, uh, you know, and I'm on a lot of cryptozoology podcasts. And of course, uh, the Robert the Doll documentary from Discovery Channel last year and all that. So, so that's kind of what we're known for. But with this podcast, we're, of course, we're going to hit that stuff. But we want to hit, just fun stuff stuff that just really stands out and is just cool historically a little off kilter even better and then of course the paranormal the cryptids and all the high strangeness out there we're going to be talking it all over the next you know however many episodes we decide to do this is just going to be fun we're going to keep rolling with it i think it's just going to be man i and we've got lots of cool people lined up that uh, are going to talk to us and we'll have some interesting takes on things from these people i just i can't wait for y'all to go on the ride with us i think it's funny because you have friends normally people say you know i have friends in high places you have friends in weird places yes and so that's and you know you say erie florida because that's where you started you have i think what is it four books in florida three four? uh yeah three we did three now that are in print there are there were few there were more before but are long gone so yeah and, and they shall remain well, buried <laughs> They're not buried. I know where to find them. You guys can send us an email. But um, the thing is, is that you're branching out like sort of globally all over the place. Yeah. Like that's So it's not just Florida. So when, if you know, people want to, they can give us stories from wherever. Oh, yes, yes, yes. And by when, as the episode goes live, uh, the website will be going live and uh, you can all adventure, uh, you know, head over to Erie Adventures. Uh, and uh, we will be having all kinds of uh, things there that are not on the episodes, like bonus material. Also, some some extra nonsense will be up there. I'll be uh, posting a blog up there intermittently uh, wow. about what the latest news and adventures are. Plus, we'll if have you links. Say Eerie Adventure, not Eerie Adventures. Like yeah, EerieAdventure.com. Eerie yeah, we don't want to get 
copyright infringement by whoever the crap sticks owns that shit right yeah now. i know what a heck what a crazy thing so uh erieadventure.com not eerie adventures but you know and that's owned by a GoDaddy bot so we'll have to do an episode on uh, domain wadding at some point oh um, gosh yeah no that's yeah i agree i agree uh, yeah, uh, but uh, yeah, eerieadventure.com, and then you'll see the button there that should be there by this time saying, send us your stories, because we want to hear them. You can send us audio or text or email, whatever you want to do, carrier pigeon, we'll get it. Uh, you know, we, you can even send a raven from King's Landing, uh, but uh, we will eventually get it here. And, send uh, all ravens to Erica, if we're yes, going to yes. send them. I want the ravens. But also <laughs> people are going to be able to upload pictures and crap and links so they can oh, yeah. tell us all about their shit, right? Like what yeah. they've encountered themselves. And Exactly. And, and, you know, and you may too be a guest on a future episode because we will have guests uh, come on to tell us their stories as well. Although, you know, there are, like I said, there's dozens of other podcasts that do that. So we're going to just try to take it for a little different spin here. Okay. Um, well, but, um, and, and I think with that, I think what, you know, one of the things we need to do is, you know, get into our first tale, right? We do, but you know what? You forgot to probably announce the most important person who's part of this podcast. Oh my gosh. Oh yes. The, 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 the power behind the throne. The Yes. Cause yes. she is, she is like the hand yes. of the King or, you know, little they are, I'm not sure the spider. She's probably more like the spider than anyone else. Very, very, they very, are, very much. Yeah, the master whispers. They are yes. like the spider. They, they, they are. whisper. They whisper to us and let us know when things are going well and when things aren't going well. Uh, my our wonderful producer, uh, my youngest child, that would be Callista Muncy, uh, the great Callie, is here. And, uh, yes. Woo! Callie. You and can't I, hear them, but they are haunting the background. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> they they may chime in with a phantom voice here and there, so uh, I hope you all enjoy them uh, when they do. Uh, but uh, they're doing the, the behind the scenes work, all the heavy lifting. Uh, we also have a couple other shout outs since we're just getting started. We've got to shout out my lovely wife Carrie Schultz for our awesome logo, and uh, yeah, yeah, the super. T- she's the talent. I just do the words, and then uh, and then my our wonderful friend who did this amazing theme song for us. The amazing, incomparably talented Destiny Beard, uh, cool. you and the whole Beard Clan. We just we love you all so much. But uh, thank you so much for doing this for us. Destiny's been doing music for me since all the way back to our Hellview Cemetery days, uh, and uh, Which is you can, eighty million years, million ago years ago, the anybody. haunted attraction I used yes. to run back in the day. That's another episode we're gonna do, right? Haunted oh, attractions. Oh, we will do haunted attractions, and uh, we have a few friends in that field who will be on. You know, we'll be covering haunted attractions as the seasons progress. I mean, we might even be doing some out of season haunts because Halloween is not just for haunts anymore. I mean. Aunts do all the holidays now, so we'll be uh, talking. That's with some true. Things. That's true. For Henry's uh, haunted trail. We'll be talking with uh, Ben from up at Netherworld. We'll be talking with a bunch of people coming up. So uh, they are excited to be a part of this, and we're excited to have them. Like Can't and wait. subscribe, so that yes. you know when that's all coming. Like and subscribe. Yes, yes, sure, on your podcast, <laughs> on your podcast platform of note. Please like and subscribe because that's how we get these awesome people to come on and do these things with us. So. And if you so, want to hear all the music and stuff, aren't we going to put the notes, show notes, show yep. notes, show notes will be on the, you know, the various platforms, but we'll also be at eerieadventure.com. So uh, definitely cool. all that fun stuff. So, so now without talking further ado, about today, I have a story for you. Oh, and this one is one of those stories I had known peripherally about it for decades but of course it is becoming something major this year. Uh, but I wanted to get a little ahead of it. Uh, although it is an older story, this goes back to this far ago time called the eighties. Uh, and uh, yeah, the and it actually goes right back. Decade. Yeah, it actually goes back before that. Um, oh. But we're gonna start our story in 1985. The man who is walking out of his house in Knoxville, Tennessee, and he's just coming out to get his morning paper, and there in his driveway is a dead body. Well, how would you that like sounds that? Sounds like a story. That sounds like a story that I would start. And exactly. It well. So, okay. 
um, a dead body. I thought this was not going to be about true crime. I guess it is. Oh, but this is the first half is true crime. Ooh. But then the second half, you're gonna, we're going on a great trail. So okay, uh, that, I'm, that's, I'm, this is just the beginning of the you know, the tip of an iceberg here. This is the tipping point. I like so, the tip. <laughs> not the, eh, just the tip, <laughs> just the tip of the iceberg. So anyway, the man is laying there in the driveway dead. He has a deployed emergency parachute. Obviously wasn't enough. His main oh. chute never opened. Okay, the man is dressed in military fatigues. He's got two guns on him. He's got a duffel bag that is filled with 40 football sized packages of cocaine. He also has night vision goggles. He has a knife. This guy was armed to the teeth. Ready? Yeah, he also had the keys. He also had the keys in his pocket to a plane. The plane, a few hours later, crashes abandoned into the forest of North Carolina uh, in the Chattahoochee Forest. Oh my goodness, right? So so, so let me, wait, let me just clarify something. It took hours after he abandoned the plane for it to crash? He put it on autopilot and jumped out. Well, that's so. just, that's a perf- that's a waste of a perfectly good goddamn plane, if you ask me. Exactly. <laughs> so they, uh, the man whose name is Andrew Thornton II, um, and yeah, he, he did not do well, right? Um, so anyway, the police start investigating. They find, you know, the plane. They found the man's you know, cocaine, you know, and so they like path backward and about 50 miles from where the body is in the forest, they find more duffel bags full of cocaine up in the trees and then one duffel bag on the ground that has been ripped open and next to it is the carcass of a 175 pound bear. This 175 pound bear had eaten 70 pounds of cocaine from the duffel bag. Is this a cocaine bear story? This is cocaine bear. Because there's a movie coming out, right? Yes. Oh my God. I love this. I'm loving this. I wish I had popcorn right now. I'd be eating it and making (laughs) a lot of noise inappropriately on the podcast. Oh my gosh. No, get your popcorn out because this is the twists and turns of this wow i you know i have to say that um i always i often wondered um about cocaine bear but never got kind of into it so to speak so i i'm i'm riveted dead body all right things in the world so yeah so bear let's do this okay so obviously the man was a drug smuggler but let's talk about andrew thornton shall we because this man's life is pretty crazy. Born in 1943 in Lexington, Kentucky. Grew up with the Thornton family, which is a thoroughbred uh, horse farm. And uh, they they, they had million dollar horses. These were some of the best of the best. So this is money family in early days of Lexington. So, um, you know, early 1900s. And um, so he had no need for money. He was well to do. Uh, He tries, grows up, goes to college, it's not for him, joins the army, goes and becomes military, becomes a paramilitary guy because, hey, he learns how to be a paratrooper. He learns how to do all these things, learns how to fly, you know, small craft, but retires from the army very quickly, doesn't stay in it long, and tries to go back to work on the horse farm with the folks. Isn't for him. This guy likes danger. This guy really likes to live on the edge. So what does he become? A police officer. And he starts really, you know, becoming this maverick cop. In fact, his ex-partner called him a Starsky and Hutch type. So I'll tell you, this is the 70s. Yeah, uh, where he you know, didn't play by the rules and, and all this. And he helps found Lexington, Kentucky's narcotics division. 
wow. uh, of, of police. And he's one of the guys on the ground building that organization. And, you know, how, how crazy is that, right? That's this guy, nice. you know, military to that. And then, like I said, he's got, he's got money still, though. He's got family money. So he starts going back to school at night to get his law degree. Okay. Oh, wow. I already love this story because we have a military cop lawyer and where yes. he ends up. Keep going. I'm riveted. All right. So, so he goes back to get his law degree. But he never actually practices law. He gets hired by a buddy of his to be in his law firm is when he quits being a cop and starts working with this guy. Now, this buddy of his, though, who runs this law firm, runs a law firm out of Fresno, California, and happens to have a branch in Lexington, Kentucky. And kind of an odd branch, right? Kind of an odd stretch there. That he is also a, has a branch I, down in Miami. Well, <laughs> this is all making a little sense now, but continue. <laughs> <laughs> so, so anyway, uh, but so yeah, you can follow the trail as it were. Uh, and um, so the, turns out the buddy's connection is the Chagua family, the Chagua brothers which were big cocaine smugglers in the early days of California. They were the power that brought cocaine and marijuana into California back in the 70s. Now, okay. so what happens is, is our good boy, Andrew, there winds up being arrested in a hotel in Fresno, California, okay? Because okay. the maid said they smelled devil's lettuce coming out of his room right smelled the are marijuana we, are we talking about the marijuana the marijuana yes so they smell that coming out of his room so the they go and investigate his room now in the room mm -hmm. 1970s right you know so this is late 70s it's actually you know very late 70s they go into his room what do they find all right in andrew's room they find 40 pounds of marijuana they find some chemical concoctions that they can't identify. They okay. find three passports with various names for them. Okay. They find several thousand dollars and they find tons of guns, tons of guns. Uh, yeah, that's literally the article says tons of guns. I'm like, is that weight or is that yeah, it's not metaphoric, but you know, you know what? So. I always, you know, you hear these things and you got to wonder what the perspective is on the person writing the article, because yeah. there's only so much room in a hotel room and there's only so much stuff you could take in there before it would red flag the people yeah. you're walking past. If you walked like literally tons of guns, people would be going, what is he taking mm -hmm. all those crates to his room? So yep. I love that the reporter said tons yes. and it was probably like five. Yeah. But now, anyway. um, now there are various, you know, this became a famous case, you know, uh, this is uh, most most famously was studied by a Washington Post author who later went on to write the book, The Bluegrass Conspiracy, uh, which is also begging to be made into a movie or a Netflix series, because, again, okay. it's crazy. You know, the Shagwa brothers, they were the guys who hired, uh, uh, well, we'll get to them, we'll get to them, because they're, they're, they play an important part of this, so. Uh, we're bunny trailing. Uh, but anyway, all right, so you're arrested for all this stuff. He mm -hmm. says, oh, I'm working for the CIA. And that's this book. He pulls out his little notebook. And this is okay. the reason I have all this stuff. And his notebook has names and phone numbers and addresses and project code names, including one called Project Bluefin, uh, and uh, which was notorious at the time. and they think this guy, well, he's basically saying that I'm a double agent. I'm working for the bad guys to bring down, bring them down. That's why I had to leave the uh, police department because I'm actually secretly working for the DEA uh, and the CIA on this to bring oh. down a cartel. Oh, of okay. course, an investigation gets launched. And of course, it's all BS. Nobody says this is real. So I, 
I appreciate they investigated that because in a yep. lot of movies back in the day, you would just take the word of the person. They would take the word of the guy, right? Yeah. Well, they're like, uh, all right, you said CIA. Well, let's talk to the CIA. Uh, well, okay. So let's say you and I in the 1970s had this hotel room filled with all this stuff. How much time do you think we would be put away for? Well, what, you know, it makes me wonder when the Drug Enforcement Agency went in because- they start about 81. 80, see, they didn't take these things as yep. serious back then. That's yep. look, look at me remembering crap stuff. Um, yep. I, I don't think they took it seriously. I give him 120 days. Okay. Well, he, he got six months in a minimum security prison uh, in Lexington. What? I want so, points. How much is 120 days? Is that four months? Wait. That's that's what? three months. Yeah, yeah, that's four months. So, yeah, it's he just four got a little months. bit more. So, I was close. <laughs> yep, yep. Plus, rich white guy. So that made all the difference, you know. Um, anyway, so one of the reasons people think that he got out as quick as he did was not just because they hadn't really done it that heavy yet. They thought he could lead them to the bigger fish. And oh. they were trying to find an organization that was codenamed The Company. And the company. it was the company, which was supposedly ex-law enforcement dealing with cartels back in South America that were smuggling cocaine and drugs into America. Okay. Now, our boy, Andrew, had been flying from Columbia to Fresno, to Lexington, to Miami, and he was making a route. And that's what he was doing, was he was smuggling, smuggling all the things. Um, but now he swears during all of this that you know he has done only for the good of the united states that and he's convinced world war three is going to happen he's a prepper he's oh. bought his own farm he's filled it with concertina wire and they were surveilling it in the 80 early 80s because they were convinced he was training guerrilla warriors on his property. Oh, so, you know, like you do. Yep. Now, while he's about to go to trial for his stuff, he gets shot walking out of a building three times. Okay. In the chest. And is there on the ground. And but he's wearing a bulletproof vest. So he survives. And okay. now everybody's like, oh my goodness, he you know, he really is in danger from these cartels. Well, turns out he actually set it up himself to try to get leniency from the judge to show that he would go, he would be dead in prison. So how crazy he, is that? He, sir? He's got himself shot. He hired somebody to shoot himself. Yeah. Wow. Wow. That's, that's a, that's a, I, I, you know, I'm going to give you leniency for that, but put you in one of the padded rooms that we have available for you because hello, crazy person. Oh my gosh. Yeah. And then the fun continues. Okay. So <laughs> the man who shot him. Mm -hmm. Okay. This is a name that I don't think you expected this story to bring up. Right. So we're talking cocaine bear here. This is the first big Hollywood tie, right? The man who shot him was Woody Harrelson's dad. No. Yes. <laughs> oh my effing God. Now, so, Charles Harrelson has, has, is a well-known hired assassin. Yeah. Uh, he famously was convicted for killing the first federal judge in the 20th century because it was a frequent occurrence in the 19th century. <laughs> but but, but not going. in the 20th. In the 20th, we pulled that back. Wow. Yeah. So yeah. he hired Woody Harrelson's dad to shoot him. Okay. To well, shoot him. Well, well, like, go go big or go home, I guess, right? I guess, right? So anyway, you know, poor Andrew, you know, this is this is his life. He then is, he, they seem to lose track of him, right? They were supposed to be following him to try to bring these other guys down. Obviously, they fail miserably. They follow him till 85. This is from 81 to 85. They were tracking him like a hawk, supposedly, but obviously more and more yeah. stuff was coming in it yeah. was he was he was doing more and more things 
And eventually that's when we find him at the, you know, at the ground, you know, at ground this guy's level. driveway. Um, so did, people question. Did the article say where he was in the military? Like, was he just. He was, a, he, he was trying to be an airborne ranger. Oh, so he, he had a little bit of the how to hide from people thing going for him. Yeah. So he had, he had it going. One of the things he was doing as a cop was he was arresting, um, you know, people who protested the Vietnam War, and he seemed to take relish in that. Oh, so okay. he was definitely, you know, hey, yeah, I was a soldier. I don't want you protesting me and stuff. Now, there were some notes that he did have some swastikas uh, that he liked to wear. So I'm like, dude, you were born during World War II? I mean, this is, you know. Well, but is, is there confirmation on it? Because he seems yep. like a prepper, and he seems yep. like he definitely had some ideals, and I'm he not deflating anti -communist. Nazis, but He was anti-communist, oh. and so he was just really heavy into that, and he thought the Nazis were the ultimate anti-communist. So that's the only thing I've seen in a couple interviews about him. Uh, he that obviously uh, didn't research the Nazis. Then. Obviously, you know, yeah. limited research available in the 70s and 80s before the internet and before all the History Channel documentaries. So, still, but okay, you yeah. get he but, gets um, an F. F yeah, for definitely. Study. That's where you know yeah. all semblance of liking the guy goes out the window, right? Yeah. Now, didn't yeah. like him to begin with. Now, super don't like him. Okay. But now the question <laughs> is, why the plane crash? Right. Yes. Now, there was supposedly another man on the plane with him. They're not sure. It's not like they kept flight logs, right? This is a, you know, this is a covert drug smuggling operation. Mm -hmm. um, but the guy who was his, quote, partner in all this uh, winds up dying two weeks later um, because he got, um, he got in a, his plane was basically sabotaged where he was on his, during his day job, who where he, with 16 people who were paratrooping, he was teaching people how to go skydiving and his plane with those 16 people gets sabotaged and crashes. So, oh my and God. they so say- 16 people lost their life. That, 16 people lost their life. And this was his partner? This was his partner. Oh. So two weeks after the, his plane, you know, where he fight winds up on the driveway. So okay. the rumor is that this guy also jumped out too and then was being held accountable for holding all the drugs from the Shogwar clan and uh, you know that they dr dumped out of the plane because obviously something oh, wow. happened. They dropped all their cargo. And so, you know, they estimate a couple hundred million dollars, you know, like half a billion dollars in cocaine and marijuana. So, wow. All right. okay. So that's how Andrew, the life of, you know, Andrew Thornton II, um and uh you know a life i would say live to the edge so this is how we have a very well equipped body on the driveway yeah. minus the fact that his parachute didn't open and yeah. it sounds like he was carrying way too much weight i'm that, not a parachuting expert maybe one of our guests can chime in about this but it occurs to me that if you're going to jump out of a plane it's one thing if you're trying to save another human but if you're going to have like four humans worth of cocaine on you, your parachute, regardless of deployment, probably won't work. That is one of the theories of his death was he had all that equipment on him and, you know, and he was overprepared. So all that weight and jumping from an unknown height. But he also was like one of those guys like to wait to the last minute to pull the cord because he lived on the edge and all that. And, you know, he also packed his own shoots and didn't trust anybody else to do it. So, you know, there's a lot of things that could have happened. And it sounds like it sounds like it. Okay. But okay. We're back. That's to the, the tip of the iceberg. Of the and I think we're going to take a quick break. And when we come back, we're going to tell the story of Cocaine Bear because just because he was found with a bunch of cocaine, there is so much to this story, and you guys are going to love it. So, oh, I can't wait. Can't wait. We are better have Woody Harrelson. We'll be right back with Eerie Adventure. Erie Appalachia. 
gear up for a frightful jaunt into the darkest reaches of the ancient Appalachians. Folks deep within the Appalachian hollers lean close to the campfire to share stories of the inexplicable with hushed awe. Monsters rumbling in the hills, strange lights darting through the pitch black night sky, horrible occurrences almost ineffable in their bizarre tragedy. Tall tales, you might say. Tell that to the Flatwoods monster in Braxton County, West Virginia, or the Goat Man of Louisville. Look into his humanoid eyes and let him know you don't believe. And what are those apparitions in Mammoth Cave's Corpse Rock, or the Satan Spawn known as the Jersey Devil? How do you respond when confronted by these mysteries? From the metaphysical energy that swirls near Serpent Mound in Ohio to Point Pleasant's Mothman Legacy, Mark Muncy and Kerry Schultz explore the dark history lurking in the shadows of Appalachia. Read by Mark Muncy, author and experts on strange folklore with appearances on shows such as Ancient Aliens, The Curse of Robert the Doll, and many, many more. Greetings, mortals and others. I'm Dick Terhune, the voice from hell. I work with haunted attractions all over the U.S., Canada, and Europe to increase audiences and enhance their experience with highly effective commercials, narrations, animatronic character voices, whatever your dark heart desires. Let me help you do more, scare more, profit more. Find out more at Voice From Hell on Facebook and at voicefromhell.com. We are back to talk about cocaine bear. Let's yes, that. yes. We have a so, dead body. So exciting. Well, we had, so we had the body, and we've got 16 more bodies, you know, 17 more bodies. We got the guy on the plane. So, and then who knows how many people, you know, this, 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 the company, what happens is they start, the reason they're keeping him, they kept him loose was they were hoping he would, you know, go up the food chain, you know, to bigger guys in the, in the company. But they also, there were a bunch of revenge deaths that occurred all over the United States. People who testified against him, uh, the prosecutor of him was found dead in a swamp in Tampa. Uh, the man who, uh, who turned evidence and said, oh, the reason he was doing all this was he was actually trying to steal guns from a government facility in California uh, that was what all the money and the drugs were financing was to steal more weapons. And they actually had also hired a mine sweeper and were commissioning it to be a drug smuggling truck, uh, yeah, a drug smuggling boat. Um, and all this, the guy who turned evidence on him in his trial wound up with a slit throat in Miami. Okay, so, wait, wait a minute. All these people died, and he only did six months. That's what we're yes. talking about, right? Yes, this guy he who did, did six a months. six months and then killed all these people. These people well, are dying right and left all around him. So people are saying that, that again, this is Woody Harrelson's dad. Well, this he is his... engineered the death yes. of all these people for six months of jail time. Yes. After and being caught with all this stuff in his room. In his room, yep. Wow, the balls on yeah. this dude at this yeah. point in time. Right, one of the guys uh, was uh, killed. The guy in Tampa had been killed with a poison uh, made out of ether. Uh, so, you know, so he's like tripping balls as he dies. I mean, this is crazy. And that was some of the stuff they found in Andrew's apartment or in his compound when they, uh, his apartment in his compound, that when they went after he died and they searched it, they found that poison in there. So. You've got to, you've got to almost wonder too, if he did that. And cause he seems like, the, and I don't even know that much about him, but he strikes yeah. me as the type of person that would want to see the look on the person's face as right. he's killing them. I mean, you're talking about Woody Harrelson's dad having committed these murders, right? Which has they no reflection on Woody Harrelson because yeah. we love Woody Harrelson, hey. but, um, and you can't always pick your family as we all know. And I'm right. sure we'll come up on many of these podcasts, but yes. um, <laughs> But the fact of the matter is, this guy really strikes me sort of egomaniac that he thinks that he, I don't, I don't know. I'm just yeah, reading into it, but I believe he would want to look at the person as they're dying to yeah. prove to them that he did it. You know what I mean? Yeah. I mean, and there, like I said, that's just, again, so now with all that said, he's gone, he's dead, good riddance, right? Um, but now we have the story of the bear, right? little Pablo Escobar, he's out wandering in the woods and he finds this Wait, what, bag. what did he just call him? 
Pablo Escobar is what he is named. Uh, Pablo, like Pablo Escobar, like the yeah, like Pablo drug Escobar, Lord? the head of the drug lords. That's his name. He has been dubbed this. So little Pablo, <laughs> isn't that the best name ever for a bear? Brilliant, brilliant. Yeah. Whoever did that. All right, so he's out there and he's wandering the woods and he finds these duffel bags raining from the sky. Doesn't know what they are. Gets into one, eats it. Oh my God, this is amazing. It makes him feel incredible. So he eats more, eats more. So he winds up eating 70 pounds of wait, cocaine. Wait, what kind of bear is it? It is a black bear. That's it not a very just, big bear to no, eat. No, only 175 pounds. That's, he ate half of his body weight? Body weight. His stomach was bursting with it. So the doctor, when they do the autopsy on the bear, realizes that his stomach is literally full of cocaine. And so the joke was for about five minutes, he was the ultimate apex predator on the planet. So before he OD'd. <laughs> oh, oh my God. Yeah, yeah, I would say so. I would. Yeah. He literally oh, well, lived gotta, though. Let me, let's just 70 pounds. Like that's yeah. a child. Like how old well do you have to be as a child to be 70 pounds? Like probably around like 10, or, 10 or 11. Yeah, I would say. Oh yeah, I think that was my weight around that time. Although I was a fat kid, so I don't know. So um, <laughs> I, I was I was the chubby nerdy kid. I can't imagine you know, what would happen to me when I grew up. So yeah, no. Well, now you're a spelt action figure. So <laughs> if anybody but, wants to look you up on the uh, yeah. con circuit, they can, oh my god, the muscles so. gonna do. <laughs> um. Oh, they're gonna be like they're gonna Google me and go really. <laughs> <laughs> that's him <laughs> uh but anyway uh the 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 bear right so the thing is the guy did the autopsy on him right forestry service guy he's like wow this bear is in great shape though because it didn't die from being hit by a car didn't die from anything like that we need to have this thing stuffed so they got it stuffed and they put it at the educational research center for the chattahoochee forest because it was like a perfect specimen of a bear except for the fact that you know, he died of what he died of. He was still very healthy and intact. So perfect bear carcass, right? I wonder so how much of that cocaine that was in his stomach was still good. Do you think, do you think some oh, of the guys took it? Probably not much. Stomach acid does its thing, man. So I, but I, I know, it is but a it's bear. 70, 70 they pounds. their food to slow down, you know. So they do slow down their digestive tracts. So maybe, I don't know. So I'm just wondering if anybody took advantage of bear cocaine. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> like, I think if, wow. I mean, it was the 80s. and It people, was the 80s. Is was the mid 80s at this point. Yep. Things so, that oh my gosh. Too out loud. Bear cocaine. Well, anyway, the poor bear, he stopped. He's put in the Chattahoochee National Forest uh, Education Center for years. Until... There's a threat of a forest fire and they have to take everything away. And then they, they take it and they put it in storage to, to keep it safe, right? Keep it secret, okay. keep it safe, right? Very Lord of the Rings, yes. Okay. Right. Mm -hmm. Ready for the next plot twist? Well, so let me let me just make sure so I'm caught up with everybody else. Yeah. Dead, we have the dead body. They go in. Who found the bear? The bear, the, the park services that was also with the, the FBI and the CIA who were investigating the drugs, they were following the trail of the plane, trying to you know, calculate where it went. And that's when they found the four, uh, over 50 miles from where the body was is where they found the drugs. Okay, so they find the crash plane, they find all the drugs, they find the bear. Yeah, they found they, the body, yeah. They autopsy the bear, and yeah. then the bear is taxidermy. I, I love that this is decided to be an educational thing. I just want to, yes. I want to know who, when, you know what, this would be educational as yes. to warn others of what happens if you give a bear cocaine. Like, I just don't know the education that goes with that. I know it's fairly healthy, but I just want to know the thought process of this is going to be educational for somebody. So the, the bear is in a storage shed. Okay, right? storage. Waiting, got it. waiting out, waiting out the fire. And then the storage shed gets robbed and they and he is kidnapped the bear Pablo the Escobar gets kidnapped <laughs> from his storage shed escaping a wildfire oh my gosh oh uh, 
That ha- that takes a lot of effort. This isn't a tiny thing to steal. I mean, 175 pound bear, but I guess he's a lot less weight, but still. It's but he's got to exactly be mounted right. to something. This is yep. not yep. like something you could throw in the back of your car. Yep. So the storage shed is robbed. <laughs> okay. Right? And they're like, oh, is this the end of Pablo Escobar? No. <laughs> he winds up in a pawn shop in Knoxville. Tennessee. How how much later from when it was about a year later after the theft? Okay, so somebody has this bear an entire year, and then it's like, you know what? He's pawned. I need some money. Let's so once he gets to the pawn shop, the pawn shop calls a friend of theirs, a man named Waylon Jennings. Like the Waylon Jennings? The Waylon Jennings, country music legend. Waylon Jennings, just the good old boy. Oh my, okay. We're Dukes, Dukes of Hazard. Is bear. He's the original highwayman. This <laughs> yeah. guy. So Waylon goes, I got to have this. And so he buys it and gives it to a friend of his. Okay. And now the friend of his is the guy who lives in Vegas, who shows the entertainers how to have a good time, right? That's, he's known for... He has a couple mansions in Vegas that when you are out doing your residency in Vegas and you want to have a good time in Vegas in the eighties, you went and saw this guy. So and this guy would let you stay in one of his mansions and one of his mansions was Kentucky themed. So of course it's like, of course in Vegas, you would want a Kentucky themed mansion. Why not? Uh, And so it was like a rustic cabin setting. So he's got Pablo Escobar in there. Now, According to the pawn shop, they didn't know that this was cocaine bear, that this was just a, just some bear that got sent to them. You but, gotta wonder uh, what, if there was labeling on whatever stand he was on. Of, according to Wayland Jennings, though, they told him immediately, hey, this is the cocaine bear you want. <laughs> Andrew Thornton. <laughs> I like the guy shop to the police is like, I have no idea who this is. Hey, by the way, I have cocaine bear. I have cocaine bear. <laughs> And it's Andrew Thornton's cocaine bear, the one that died with Andrew. Because what happens is that guy who is the guy who knows how to make people have a good time was one of Andrew Thornton's old partners. So, wow. so that's why having that bear, oh my gosh, it's Comes a tie. Full circle. Yep. So the bear stays in Vegas for a number of years. Waylon passes. This guy finally passes. And then they auction off his mansions because he has no relatives. And and at no point in time does anybody go, um, that, is there like a reward out for Cocaine Bear? From No, not at this point. It's okay. like, It was thought lost to history, right? Oh, uh, lost they to thought history. it was lost. Yeah, they just thought it was gone. You know, who's going to sell a bear, you know, from, you know, from a you know, storage shed, you know? They were more concerned about some of the, Art, uh, Indian artifacts and other things that were in there that they did recover most of those. So, well, you know, yeah. I guess we're like, oh, I guess we don't need that bear back. It's yeah, fine. Yeah. So anyway, and no one really knew about this bear being in, you know, this guy's custody for forever. Uh, it's not like he was advertising. It wasn't like a public place either. You know, you know, you had to be a big high-end celebrity who was into drugs to, to, to even see this thing. Um, you gotta know people. I yeah, know that you was know, you know to hold them, I don't to even hold know them. what I was doing there. Was... Yeah, yeah. So okay. then the bear, you know, has you know had a good life in this mansion, I assume, seeing who knows what at those parties. Uh, and then you know, do you wonder how many corpse. people had sex on the bear? Because <laughs> gotta wonder. You know, you somebody wonder. had to have had sex on. You that know, bear. somebody did cocaine off the bear's back. You know, come yeah. on. You know, it's uh, although cleaning a bear is pretty. I would assume not an easy thing. So I, I can, but I guess the maids would be paid plenty, you know, to keep it quiet and whatever else they saw there. But anyway, so Cocaine Bear lived a life beyond his life as a party animal, too. Uh, I see that. Yeah. And then, like I said, it was auction. Okay. And an elderly Chinese man was the only bidder on Escobar. And he got him for the stately sum of $200 in wow. the 1990s. Yeah, late 1990s. Do we know how much he was pawned for? Uh, we do not know. 
We do not know. I'm just wondering about the devaluation. The devaluation. <laughs> because he technically was worth 70 pounds of cocaine at, <laughs> at one point, start of he this was, endeavor. He must have been the, you know, a couple hundred, at least a million dollars there. Yeah. But now, uh, yeah so, and now he's down to $200. This is a sad story. A sad tale man, when you the do The man cocaine. opens, has a Chinese medicine restaurant. He brings the bear home. Or Chinese restaurant. Sorry, Chinese medicine, not restaurant. Sorry. He owns okay. a Chinese restaurant. He also owns a Chinese medicine shop. Okay. And he brings the bear home, and his wife says it scares her too much. They has to take it to one of the places. So he takes it to the shop, and it becomes the shop's mascot at the Chinese shop. Well, yeah. that's poetic now, in a very weird, weird way. Okay. Now we come to our eerie adventure portion of the show. This is where you can actually go <laughs> We're experience. in our eerie adventure. <laughs> yeah, that's the tale. That's the tail okay. portion of the show. So now the adventure portion goes, well, I would like to see Cocaine Bear. Now that, you know, what happened to him? The last stage of his journey. Well, two gentlemen who own a company in Kentucky called K Kentucky for Kentucky or KY for KY uh, decide they want to find out what happened to Cocaine Bear. They read the Bluegrass Conspiracy. They have a bunch of eclectic stuff in this shop of theirs. They open the fun mall. It's called the KY for KY Fun Mall, and they- uh, That sounds like a different kind of fun. I wonder yeah, if they- Yeah, exactly. It's, it's, it's they very did ride it, friendly, but, yeah. uh, but uh, which is why we love this shop. And they dug into this to figure out what happened to the bears. They found this bunny trail. They were the ones who figured out, went to Waylon Jennings, went to this guy, went to this guy. Uh, all this is long after the Bluegrass Conspiracy stories are long gone. Andrew has been dead since the 80s. But these guys have been chasing it down. They finally find- the widow of the poor elderly Chinese man. Okay. And he had died. And she said, please take the bear. All it will cost you is your shipping. So, oh, wow. <laughs> so, so now so he's they, worth nothing. Nothing. The shipping costs. <laughs> so they bring him to their shop where he is still there today. It is in the heart of Lexington, back where... Andrew Thornton II was born. It has come full circle. The bear is now in Kentucky. And he is on display in the Kentucky for Kentucky Fun Mall. And um, you too can get your picture with Pablo Escobar, where there is a wonderful little plaque ne mounted next to him. You said, you know, a good mounting. You know, and a good it's, mounting. It's, yep. Pablo Escobar, uh, you know, don't do drugs. Or you'll wind up stuffed like Pablo. Yeah, wow. the ultimate apex predator. So that is like so many levels of ridiculous. I think we could have probably gone on for hours about this weird journey with this bear <laughs> and what this guy did. I just, wow, no. Um, so I'm assuming, Mark, I'm assuming yes. that you've gone to see. Mr. Cocaine Bear, knowing oh, yes. that you know about the plaque. So yes. when, and, when did you go see Cocaine Bear? Uh, uh, we went and saw him right before, uh, it was right after Thanksgiving. Uh, we were up there for CryptidCon uh, in Lexington and everybody was saying, you gotta go see Cocaine Bear. You gotta go see Cocaine Bear. And I had heard about him for a long time, but I'd never actually been. So went to see him. Now, of course, the day we get there, is the day the movie trailer drops. Oh my goodness. Yes. Well, that's so, convenient for us. <laughs> yes, yes. So Elizabeth Banks has decided to make her directorial debut. Well, with it's the not movie. debut. Debut. Oh, she did yeah, pitch she, perfect. She did pitch perfect. So her next, her next directorial uh, uh, opus is Cocaine Bear, starring oh, wow. the late, great Ray Liotta. I can only hope he's playing. Charlie uh Woody Harrelson's dad, uh Charlie Harrelson. Uh, I, but I don't I think hope so. he is the lead investigator on this case, actually. That would be great. That would be more screen time. That would be more screen Yoda. time, it would be fun. But I have no idea how they're gonna play it. It looks comedy, and of course, the movie trailer is two minutes of this giant killer bear, you know, attacking all the things. And um it's it looks like a wild comedy. I am all in. Uh, and I, I, I agree. We will have to do the premiere and then do a follow up. I'll have to do a follow up with the full movie review and everything. Uh, yeah. 
yeah, and it's coming out in March of 2023. Uh, and uh, oh my God, it just, uh, so anyway, we're there that day. And of course the place is packed. And, uh, and they were, they were like, yeah, this, you know, we're, we're selling out of merch super quick. Uh, but you can go to their website and order plenty of merch. But I highly recommend if you're anywhere within a few hours of Lexington, Kentucky, make your drive there. The, the, the shop is amazing. Uh, there's plenty to see. Uh, uh, this is, again, just one of the many things they have there. Uh, oh, wow. they, they, it's, um, man, I, I just can't, I can't praise it enough. It's, uh, Whoa. uh, my, they have wonderful shirts that, uh, were, uh, they have a lot of Kentucky themed ornaments for Christmas trees at the time. So they had like, they were little turkey legs or ch thick chicken legs and, uh, chicken wings, uh, Christmas lights. I was like, yeah, that's, that's bold. Uh, and then they had, um, you know, signs for Kentucky pride chicken that were rainbow signs. Uh, there were, there was a lot of good stuff there. So it sounds amazing. So I, I think, you know, listeners out there, if you happen to go see, you know, cocaine bear, you should send us your photos. We would yes. love to see your photos. And I mean, if you held up a little thing that said, I heard about you on Erie adventure. I mean, we wouldn't mind yeah. that. We might yes. even share it on social media. Yeah, and yeah, if you know anything yeah. about cocaine bear, you guys should share it with us because yeah, like this... if you I mean if you've gone down this bunny trail, the bluegrass conspiracy, and you found some of these other characters from history that are involved in this, uh, you know, this I mean, literally, there it, you know, there are three books about this, and you can just go deep dive into each one. Some of them uh, you know, go all into the Shagwa you know, conspiracy, the whole bit about the, you know, the company, of course, you know, you know, uh, James Patterson even uses the company as their, his big cartel and several of his, of his works, you know, as that's the, 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 the power behind the power and, uh, you know, how high was Andrew Thornton in this organization? We don't know. That's, you know, he's, he's, he's dead on a, dead on a driveway. You know, he went pancake. Well, you know, I mean, it's terrible all the lives that were lost yes. during this adventure, you know, and not taking away from any of that and the families who lost people due to that. But I mean, how ridiculous of a, of a story is it that what he did managed to create this sort of myth legend? It's not yes. even a myth. It's a real person. It's a like, real thing. Yeah. It's not even a cryptid. What's the best yeah. part is cocaine bear is not a cryptid. No, no, he is not. He is not, you know, he is not Hogzilla. He is not, you know, the meth gator, you know, but he's up there with those. And those are future episodes. Well, I, I was going to say, Hogzilla and meth gator, we definitely have to go down that rabbit hole. Okay? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. We yeah. will be, we will be talking all these fun things eventually. And, uh, and we will be getting experts on to discuss some of these. But, um, there's a, a meth gator expert. There is a meth gator expert. I know, there, there, is. Expert, I know so. there is. Yeah, just... <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'll wait. Just wait. So uh, he's a character in himself. But uh, anyway, yeah. So, so, so the moral of the story, gang: don't do drugs. <laughs> drugs are bad. Okay. Okay. You'll end up well, stuck. I think I think we should revise the moral of the story, which is: um, do not do seventy pounds. Don't eat seventy pounds of cocaine. That is yeah. probably a bad thing. Yeah, yeah. I, I think yeah. You know, <laughs> that's definitely, it, you know, if your stomach is only 70 pounds and, and you have filled it with, with, with a, with a uh, controlled substance, there might be issues. So, you know, please contact your doctor, you know, <laughs> immediately. <laughs> I, you know, we're going to not give medical advice on this show for what you should. However, if you happen to be a part of witnessing a plane crash full of no. drugs and there's wildlife about, leave, just go. Oh just my go. God. It doesn't yeah. turn out well. This is not going to end well for you. So, yeah. And uh, now, now let's, you know, we go back with all this. We've got all these, this crazy story and all this stuff. Uh, you know, there are still people who were involved in this. Now, uh, you know, uh, Andrew was married for a couple of years. Oh, really? Uh, his wife, uh, he supported her even after their divorce. He just was not the marrying kind. He did not want to be tied down. But his wife, I can't find a single bad thing she ever said about him. Just that, you know, he, he, the only the worst thing was 
he uh you know he felt like he was not needed as a husband and um so but he needed to do more on the street and um right. and that was during his police years and um all of his partners like i said they all called him like he was the bad cop when the good cop bad cop stuff came to shove but they all said he was a good guy you know well like, other than being a nazi sympathizer i suppose he was living this double life and that's what i think the wife just you know was keeping him from living this life on the edge that he needed and um and i you know i think you know, it's pretty crazy when you're hanging out with hitmen and, uh, you know, and gun smugglers and drug smugglers and you're, you know, flying secret flights in and out of South America. You can only, you know, you know, it's being tied down. Bad. It's just, yeah. And I'm, I'm not going to be sad that he's a pancake. I'm just throwing that no, out. I'm no, not no, sad definitely not. A and again, there are lots of theories about how he died. You know, was, did the partner kill him or were they the reason the partner got killed two weeks later because, you know, was that a cover up or was it a revenge killing like these other revenge killings that had happened? And well, the fact know, that these. I, I here's the only part that doesn't work for me on all of that. These drug companies would not, under any circumstances, want to lose that much product. So oh, even yeah. if his partner, like, I'm just, here's, here's yeah. the, here's the conspiracy theory, true crime part of me goes. There's no way they'd want to lose all that product. So even if they decided to take them out, it would have been done a different way as to not create that particular scenario. Because, I mean, we're talking at the time, probably millions of dollars now, probably oh, hundreds yeah. of millions of dollars. Hundreds of millions. Yeah, game. especially. And the money he had on his person, you know, he had thousands of dollars on his person. He had some gold Krugerrands on his person when he died, you know, like, like you uh, do. No yeah, you know, like well, he was convinced. Remember, he was convinced that World War III was imminent. So, uh, yeah, so he was carrying a lot of gold on him because, you know, that cash is going to be useless. And um, it's just, I, it's just wild. But then the whole, the bear story, I think what got me on this was as I'm researching this and I'm learning all this stuff about, you know, I get to the bear and, and then, oh, he's dead. That's sad. And then the adventure, the corpse of the bear goes on is just as amazing <laughs> as the life of the crazy guy who caused all this uh you know and then you know Waylon Jennings oh my gosh how, how crazy I, is that just the amount of people that touch the story is so ridiculous and yeah I'm, and anyway. we'll never really know the the all the people involved in the parties at the mansion that the bear was at this is uh oh uh, well yeah. that if there are pictures of that i'm just saying <laughs> i'm sure, I'm sure have this would have been on social media so this would have been late you know early 80s so you know cell phones not a thing but disposable cameras were a thing i was gonna Vegas. say if there's any party pictures send them our way we will yep. not share them unless you give us including hey guys if you share stories with us you can tell us not to use your real name please yep. feel free to change the names to protect the Innocent or not so innocent. I like both flavors. So very cool. Yeah. Oh. So I think that this was a great story to start with because it just has every twist and turn you can imagine. Uh, and uh, like I said, it isn't encrypted, but it is. I mean, you know, it's one of those. Is he urban legend? No, he's real. We we you know this is there is no there is no legend about this except for you know some of the stuff that's going to be in the movie. But uh, you know. <laughs> Some, some I, things were changed to make it more entertaining. Interesting, yeah. But uh, I cannot wait to see how this goes. And I am excited for future adventures. Episodes. What are we yeah. talking about? What's coming up? I'm super excited. Uh, I mean, I, I, you know, in the future, uh, in the future. we have uh, quite a few lined up. But uh, I believe our next subject is going to be one of those things where we're going to talk about, well, let's, let's give them a tease. We'll say... The theme song to Moonraker, okay, James okay. Bond, Moonraker, and then we're also going to talk about the Hadron Collider. Okay. So we're going very science fiction with this. Well, I right? was going to say we're going very science fiction, but I have a feeling we're not really going science fiction. No, we? no, no, no. And then we're also going to throw in uh, Fruit Loops. Okay, Fruit Loops. I, I I enjoy Fruit Loops thoroughly. I feel I'm not going to enjoy them the same way with what we're talking about. Yeah. But I love this. No, Mark, that was an amazing story. That was so yeah. cool. Well, I'm glad we enjoyed it. I had a lot of fun and uh, I can't wait to, we'll be 
you know, we'll be talking all kinds of things. I'm waiting for some stories that you're going to bring us. Uh, uh, you know, I'm not going to be the only storyteller here. Uh, no. But um, but we have got, and I can't wait to see what everybody else sends us for, you know, a, a episode ideas and things you would like to see. I cannot wait uh, to see where this goes. Um, I think, my goodness, the most important thing, though, is we've got to, once again, thank everybody for listening. Yes, if you thank enjoyed you all it, for being with us. Yeah, give it a like, give it a subscribe, share the word. We're in the early days. We'd like to build this thing, you know, into something that you can all be proud of. Uh, and, and we um, want you guys to come on this adventure with us because yes. we're going to get seriously weird, folks. We get oh, man, yeah, it's the, the, we are going to delve into all the high strangeness. That's uh, that's going to be our specialty here. Oh, and uh, you know, just when you think you've heard it all, there's more. There's as many plot twists as this one had. There's more coming. But uh, thank you all so much for joining us, and we will uh, thank Callie for producing this wonderful episode and doing well, all the Callie! magic in the post editing uh, that I'm sure edited out all those terrible things that we talked about when we went off on that one whole side trail. You know, yeah, oh my no, gosh. I don't think she's editing it that much. You can cling to that, but I don't think that's happening, my friend. Okay, okay. As long, <laughs> long as she doesn't cut out the bit about Waylon Jennings, that's the important thing. I, I don't think she's cutting anything out. I think uh, yeah, as long as they're not, yeah, as as ridiculous they're not thing them. that comes out of your mouth is going to be incorporated forever on the interwebs. You are the best. And then uh, we've got, uh, you know, and Destiny is going to play us out here in just a few minutes. So uh, have you got wonderful. anything you got coming up, Erica, that you want to discuss? No, I, I, I have um, I firmly are excited about the fact that I got brand new slippers, but I don't think it's show worthy, but they're very, <laughs> very comfortable. So I'm going to take us out with well, put on your cozy slippers. And listen well, to more podcasts from us. Well, when we are next in person together, I am bringing you your cocaine bear. Uh, I got a cocaine that got. bear shirt. That is a cocaine amazing. bear hoodie. Woo! Yep. So Woo! the ultimate party animal is coming for you, and uh, and we'll be seeing that at Pensacon shortly. So I cannot wait. So oh yeah, no, we'll be at Pensacon. If you want to come up to us and meet yes. the Air Say, hey, crew. You heard the first episode. We we, we love you. Hopefully, a few episodes will be out by then, and uh, and you know that'll be great. So oh my gosh, okay. we're coming up. I saw the 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 two minute warning. So I think we're two minutes. Mark, do you have time. anything exciting besides showing up at Pensacon? Wait, uh, you're also well, a mad monster. You I'm a mad monster the that. week before Pensacon. Uh, then we're also hitting um, in between the two. So mad monsters in North Carolina, and then uh, Pensacons in Pensacola, Florida, and that week in between is Mardi Gras. Uh, but we will not be doing Mardi Gras. <laughs> we will be avoiding New Orleans. Say, yeah. But we will be hitting. Mississippi and Alabama, and we'll be hitting Fife, uh, where the Fife UFO incident occurred. And Ooh. we'll also be doing Pascagoula, Mississippi, uh, which also had a UFO incident. So, and those are for a project that is to be named later. But uh, yeah, we're excited. Uh, and the Erie Appalachia audiobook has gone to press uh, from yes. Four Horsemen Publishing and History Press, and it is available on fine uh, audio book places now so definitely give yourself a download if you want to hear more of me in between episodes and learn about fun things like the bench leg of Gobel ridge and the snarly yow and the snally gaster and other fun monsters that are fun to pronounce did so, you um, just pick all the ones with an s name for that last little bit there? just for that last little bit yeah <laughs> i just talked about snarly yow on another podcast so it was uh stuck in my head so i like uh, it but yeah I could have said okay. Mission Pichu, but that's a long one. But anyway, yeah, so that's it. We're out of time, gang. Thank you so much, and we will see you. Next. See you next time. Bye.